This game was always great. A platform for players to stretch the art form and themselves while leaving footsteps for others to follow. And this year, the future of women's lacrosse arrived. Faster, sharper, and tougher. And more exciting than ever. Syracuse at Northwestern, the dream is alive as we welcome you into Johnny United Stadium in Towson, Maryland. A terrific second semifinal as the Big Ten champions undefeated Northwestern Wildcats take on the number three seed Syracuse Orange. What a start to championship weekend. That dramatic first semifinal, Boston College upsetting the number one seed, North Carolina, ending the top seeded Tar Heels program record win streak. The Eagles advancing to their fourth straight championship game. And this second semifinal, Northwestern and Syracuse, it sets up to be just as fun, just as exciting. We're ready to keep it going. Alongside Sheehan Stanwick Birch, I'm Jay Alter. We'll be joined by Dana Boyle in just a minute. Sheehan, you look at this Northwestern team, they score more goals than any team in the country, more than 20 goals a game. The knock on them is they were scoring those goals largely in the regular season against Big Ten opponents only. Now you're playing ACC competition. Well, in the quarterfinals against Duke, they put 22 on. Yes, and Kelly Monty Hiller, when you talk to her, they never doubted themselves. They knew how good they were. They felt they've been challenged, and the Big Ten really provided them great efforts to go against. But they want to knock down another ACC team with this number one offense. You talk about why Northwestern scores a lot of goals. It all starts with the Skane train. All aboard, Izzy Skane. She's only played 15 games because of that shortened Big Ten only season. 94 goals. That's more than six goals a game to lead Division One. She's only six goals away from setting the single season record at 100 goals in a season. What makes her so special? I mean, she is like a train when you see her on the field. She goes full speed ahead. She doesn't slow down. down. She's got great dodging ability, excellent footwork. Her six skills are amazing. When she goes to goal, she's looking to score. You've got a guarder. She shoots from long range, in tight, under pressure. She does it all, and she is dominant when she's on the field in front of the goal. So you know Izzy State and Northwestern are going to find a way to score. So if you're Syracuse, how do you keep pace? You know, you just really have to go with their motion offense. And when it works well, it's a thing of beauty. They do work the ball. They do a weave up top. Gary Gate calls it his motion offense, which means everyone's moving. You're setting picks. You're off ball. You're looking to get a step on your defender. There's people coming around the crease looking for the opening. And they are amazing at reading and exploiting the defense when everything clicks. But you see the vision here, creating space and opportunities to score. Emma Ward gets the catch right here. She had six goals against Florida, just a freshman, and Syracuse does an excellent job. Anyone is able to step up in this offense. We talk a lot about offense, and with this matchup, these two teams, rightly so, they're both scoring machines, but Dana Boyle, it's not all about the offense, right? It is not. He had mentioned it best. On defense, no one player is responsible for success. You see it on the offensive end for Syracuse, but you also see it on the defensive end. And when I think of Syracuse defensively, I think of Asa Goldstock. If they're going to will a win past Northwestern, Asa Goldstock has to play huge. She has to play lights out, and she has to lead the Syracuse zone defense from behind. Gary Gate has told us all season long when Asa Goldstock, the fifth-year senior, can make a couple of early saves, it just settles the whole team down. He feels like in the three games they lost this season, just wasn't getting that bright start in goal and defensively and going against this Northwestern star-studded attack headline by Izzy Skane. It's all going to be about how the Syracuse defense can start this game. We've had on and off rain through semifinal number one. Right now, the sky is clear for first draw. Northwestern in white. Brennan Dwyer in the circle for Northwestern. 
Syracuse in the Navy and oh. Orange. Nope. Caitlin Mascheski in the drop control circle for SU as we are underway. Championship weekend continuing here at Towson, Maryland. And it'll be Syracuse that starts with the ball after a whistle. Officials are talking things over. It's going to be a whistle. Stay right there where it is. I think they're going to change possession, Dropping saying there was here. an early entry. Yeah, they're going this way. She said they came in early over there. My whistle, my whistle. So you can hear with our mic'd up officials, early entry into that draw control circle. So it'll be Northwestern that starts with possession. So Wildcats team trying to reboot a dynasty. They won seven national championships in eight years from 2005 to 2012. That last title in 2012 coming against this Syracuse program. And they have not won one since. Have a great opportunity to do so. Feel really good about their team. Undefeated 15-0. Already a Big Ten championship. Lindsay McCone rears back, fires, and opens the scoring. Lindsay McCone strikes first. And it's Northwestern who draws first blood. Lindsay McCone, who was, really moves the midfield position this year, played more of an offensive role, gets her 26th goal this season. Such a great scrappy player, does so much on the draw. She finds her opening here. Look at that placement, bottom corner. Beautiful shot. That deserves another look. That was great. Just non-stick side, bottom corner. Excellent accuracy. Bottom hand. And a goal in the opening minute for McCone and Northwestern. A perfect start in this second semifinal. Winner of this game faces Boston College on Sunday. Syracuse had possession, and they'll keep it after a foul's called. For Syracuse, Sheehan, you talked to the open about the motion offense. How does Northwestern defensively combat that? It's all about communication. So they are moving the ball. They are just rotating, setting picks. A pick and roll, you have to communicate. If you're going to switch, you have to make sure that you're committed to the switch. You can't hesitate because that's where they capitalize. They do some fake flips, so they're just really trying to get the, the defense to just get one step off, and then they capitalize. Great ball movement early. Here's Megan Tyrell. She'll draw an eight-meter opportunity early. The juniors stepped up in such a big way. An attack line that started with Megan Tyrell, Megan Carney, and Emily Harris, Chuck. She's seen those two starters both lose their seasons to ACL injuries, and yet she battles on. Behind the line. 102 points, a career high. The junior charges in. Can't get it past Doucette. Battle for the ground ball, won by Northwestern. And look out, the Wildcats dangerous in transition. Plenty of room to run for Northwestern. Here's Lauren Gilbert with a head of steam. Kept it alive. Goldstock makes the save. A whistle comes in. That was a beautiful play in transition, just showing all the speed that Northwestern has. Syracuse will get called for a check into the body. This will send Jill Girardi to the 8-meter. Girardi, a senior at Northwestern, hometown, Watertown, New York, just an hour north of Syracuse. One-on-one -on -one with Goldstock. They're fixing the game clock, and they need it on there. Number three, I need you directly behind her, please. Ladies, relax. You need to be behind the line, and you need to be behind the line. We're getting a clock set, and we're getting a recall. So the possession clock is set, game clock is set. 
Now we're ready. This is amazing. Thank you once again to the officials for allowing us to get some insights, hear them mic'd up. And we're going to see a false start so that you, you cannot enter early as an offensive player. There's been a lot of conversation about that this season. If, as an offensive player, if you go in early, it's a change of possession like we're seeing right here. A defensive player, though, if you go early and jump the whistle, you just go behind. So not much of a penalty. It almost encourages you to jump the whistle as a defense. But big time play for Syracuse in possession. Asa Goldstock, very active in the clearing game. You don't see a lot of goalies this comfortable, this far out of their cage. But she makes a big difference in the clearing game for Syracuse. It clears it successfully. Here's Emma Ward coming off that six-goal performance of the quarterfinal against Florida. Where's number 44 in blue? Read this week in U.S. Lacrosse Magazine that Emma Ward played football until eighth grade and picked that 44 number because if she was playing football for Syracuse, she wouldn't be able to wear it. That's a retired number. Legends like Jim Brown, who was a big lacrosse player, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little. So she knows the history of that number in the Syracuse athletic program and shows it herself. Take a look at Madison Doucette in goal for Northwestern. Hasn't really been bothered too much today. Got a great defense in front of her. Talked to her yesterday. She, and she has a lot of confidence in this Northwestern team. Well, and what's not, I mean, every game, they have really just, they've been challenged at times, but they've been able to pull away. And we're going to see, I think that was a shot that hit a player. That's a yellow card. So this is a big call against Northwestern. Dangerous propelling on Lauren Gilbert, number one. I guess that's why Carrie DeFelice wears the helmet. Well, yeah, it's a, you know, you have to be control, in control of your stick. So here's Gilbert inside. Oh, and. Yeah. So that's a, a yellow card. She'll be sidelined for up to two minutes. It is releasable. So this is a great opportunity for Syracuse who struggled on their opening two possessions. Now they're a woman up for two minutes. And Gary Gate active on that sideline. He wanted to see another yellow card for that hit in the midfield. Gary in his 14th year, head coach of his alma mater. This, this, this game, I think this is going to be a yellow card here. I hope. This is, you got to set the tone. There's been some very aggressive fouls early on. It will be a yellow card. Dangerous flashing check. Good call by the officiating crew. Setting the tone early. Watch the swiping check. It doesn't matter if it makes contact or not. A dangerous check like that. Can and should be yellow carded. So, Syracuse, great opportunity here. Sheen is a former player. You know the excitement, the energy of playing in championship weekend, but you have to channel it for good and not commit those early yellow cards like we've seen Northwestern do. And you can sense the tone. You could hear even the sideline. People wanted a yellow card on the last foul. So, you've got to understand that the officials need, when you have three kind of hard fouls right in a row, you got to rein in your play. A team's fourth yellow card is an unreleasable two-minute penalty, and it's a player, if you get two yellow cards, you're out for the rest of the game. Syracuse, two women up. Northwestern trying to take it away. Doucette out of her cage. The Orange could reset with Meg Tyrell. Here's Sam Swart, quick passing around the perimeter. Northwestern packed in, down two women on this possession. Driving in, great save, Madison Doucette. Northwestern couldn't corral the rebound, and they commit another foul on the freshman Emma Ward. Beautiful save for Doucette. We've seen the, just the goalies play, make some amazing saves. That's awesome. I mean, the kick saves, just the body movement. Smart play by Emma Ward there. Fires with some high heat, inches away from tying it at one. Still 28 seconds left on the two women up clock. Dumps it inside, make Tyrell patient, kicks it back out.
Here's Emma Ward. Draws another whistle. Shooting Call Shoot. a shooting space foul there. Great opportunity here for the freshman. In big moments this season, Ward has delivered five goals in the ACC semis against Boston College, six goals in the quarterfinal against Florida. Northwestern jumps early. Please, We're seeing case in point what happens right there. 24 false starts, starts are going to give her a warning, but then a defensive player from Northwestern just fills into their space right there. So it's not really a penalty. Ward passes it off, and Syracuse cashes in on the extra woman opportunity. Syracuse worked hard for this goal. Megan Tyrell, she stepped up in so many injuries to the Syracuse team. She's been a real leader. Ward with a beautiful cross field pass. And an excellent finish. Very tough for a goalie. You've got to be focused on the shooter on those eight meters. And then when you make that long pass, they've got the whole cage that they've got to cover. Junior attacker Megan Tyrell. Sister Emma's also on the Syracuse team, and she's been on the offensive end as well. They work great in tandem. And because Syracuse scored that goal while they were still on the two women up penalty, it negates one of the yellow cards, but still... An extra woman opportunity for 45 more seconds if the Orange could win this draw. Battle for that ground ball scooped up by Syracuse. Caitlin Mashevsky got to it. So now about 30 seconds will be left on this woman up penalty once the Orange can settle possession. Here's the senior, Sam Swart. Tons of speed for number three in Navy. Hard foul in the middle of that eight meter. It'll send Swart for a free position opportunity. Sam Swart's wearing a lot of those turf beads all, all up and down her arm. She's been so fun to watch. Brings a ton of energy to the Syracuse team. Great in transition. Gary Gate told us he loves watching Sam Swart play. She's got one speed. It's full throttle. Can't score there. The rebound stays with the orange, though. Doucette's making the save, but she's spilled two of them now, and it's given Syracuse an extra possession. Back to full strength. Curling around. It's Meg Tyrell again. She's got both goals for Syracuse. And the Orange turned two yellow cards from Northwestern into two goals. The Syracuse offense works well when they are moving the ball. People off ball moving too. No one standing and watching. Excellent job getting the defense rotating. And Megan Tyrell does a great job just streaking across the middle. Beautiful shot. She's got that separation from her defender and gets it slipped by Doucette. She and you mentioned it. it's that dynamic offense. It's off-ball players that are going to make it really hard for the Northwestern defense to really stop. And it's that persistence that they have. Getting that extra possession, great shot. A little more than six minutes into this game, Sheehan. Northwestern has committed nine fouls, Syracuse two. Games can be lost with a lot of the fouls. It all depends if those fouls correlate into yellow cars, which you've seen two of already for Northwestern, and to eight-meter opportunities. So you have to realize and adjust the way your game is being played if the officials are going to call it. And I, li I like them calling it safe. I mean, this is a, a game where we, yellow cards, you've got to keep the game safe. If there's a lot of slashing, cross-checking, or checks to the head, you want the, the officials to card those. Seven minutes into this game. Izzy Skane just getting her first touch. There she is, 27 in white. Great feed from Skane, but it's intercepted. Trying to squeeze it in there, thread the needle. And the Orange defense read it the whole way. Sarah Cooper with a great takeaway. 
Northwestern in their last game against Duke, they started out slow. They couldn't hit their shots. Duke went on a run. They were up 6-1. to one. And then finally, Northwestern was able to piece things together, and they scored in, in bunches after that and ended up beating Duke 22-10. to 10. So they've come back. They haven't. They weren't to challenge much in their Big Ten schedule. Maryland hung with them tight for a little bit, and there was moments where they were able to pull away. But that Duke game, they were able to come roaring back after being down. Thirty seconds left on the shot clock. Kara Quimby weaving through traffic and draws the okay, foul. You're right across her here. Back up to center half, 24 behind. Ball with here. Ball to four. Love hearing the official call. So again, she said you're right across her here, motioning to her body. You can't check into the body area. Eight meter from straight away for Kara Quimby. Charges in, great save, Doucette snuffed it out right on the doorstep. And a quick release too, made the save, got it out quickly. Here's Lauren Gilbert, Northwestern running and gunning early in this game. to chase after this one, does so successfully. Syracuse defensively plays the backer zone. They're happy to keep things out on the perimeter. Got him. Another one, another yellow card foul. Check to the head, number 16. Outside well, the officials half, have you. set the tone early, like you said, Sheehan. A check to the head called against Grace Fahey, the senior. And you can see yep. that right in that chin area. And it doesn't matter if it's intentional, not intentional, if it's hard or not. Any check to the head is an automatic yellow card. So we'll see what Northwestern does. This makes the defense obviously a lot easier to, to beat being up a player. Brennan Dwyer with possession on that outside hash. And Dwyer elects to take it back out. Set up the offense now. A woman up for the first time in this game, Northwestern. Trailing by one, nearly 10 minutes in to this first half of semifinal number two. Here's Skein. Feed inside the extra pass. And it's Syracuse possession. Got to the ball first. Big defensive turnover. Coach DeFelice on the sideline is yelling, shooter, shooter. So any time that the ball goes into a Northwestern hand like Izzy Skane or McCone, they're instantly pressuring out really high-pressure defense. It's what we talked about in the beginning, that Syracuse zone is persistent. You mentioned defensive coordinator Caitlin DeFelice. It's been a busy couple of weeks for her. She gave birth to her son, Connor, in between the ACC tournament and the selection show. The selection show was on Sunday. She was back in practice on Tuesday, gearing up for this NCAA tournament run. Gary Gates said, what can you say? She's unbelievable. <laughs> in Gary Gates' tenure, this is Syracuse's eighth trip to championship weekend. They've struggled in this spot, though. Just a two and five record in the semifinal. They've never won the big one. Lost the title game to this Northwestern team in 2012. Before the season started, you would have expected Syracuse to be in this spot. They had maybe the best player in the sport, Emily Harris, Chuck, Maggie Carney, emerged as a leading scorer for the Orange. Now they're both 
out for the year with ACL injuries. They don't make excuses. They keep believing. And the senior, Sam Swart, right on cue with two seconds left on the shot clock, makes it 3-1 Orange. That is just a beautiful play for Syracuse. And they have just had that whole next woman up mentality. You mentioned Emily Harris Chuck goes down after the first game of the season, but players like Sam Swart have just emerged. Megan Tyrell with the feed, and now Syracuse with the lead, three to one. Welcome back to Towson, Syracuse, and Gary Gate, an early 3-0 lead. The two head coaches of this game, very familiar with one another. But Kelly Amante Hiller, the head coach at Northwestern, was a player at Maryland. Gary Gate was an assistant head coach on that team. And Gary said, when we asked, what was coaching Kelly like? He said, out of all the players that he's played with or coached with, and that is spanning multiple decades, I never saw a harder worker. She would always run back into that huddle, incredible drive and work ethic. And then added, her team kind of has taken on her personality since she started that program in Northwestern. They won't be outworked. Both Gary Gate and Kelly Monty Hill are amazing players and so much respect from their teams. And I think their teams model both of their work ethics and style of play. Kelly won a couple national championships as a player, two as a player, seven as a coach. So much success. Gary Gate was part of that string of national championships at University of Maryland. But he wants one for the Syracuse Orange. And I think a really impressive staff for Syracuse is every single class under Gary Gate's tenure at Syracuse, they've been to this championship weekend one time. He's put all his players in at one time or another a position to win a national championship, which is super, super impressive. Coming out of that timeout, Kelly Amante Hiller stressed, we need to get the possession, find it in yourself to get the ball, and they did just that off that drop control. But they give it right away. The draw control only means something if you can keep that possession, Sheehan. You gotta turn those possessions into good scoring opportunities. And even the first game of the semifinal matchup today, UNC dominated the draw controls, but BC was able to figure out other ways through saves, caused turnovers, just put, to put a bow on that Gary Gate, Kelly Amani, Hiller connection. It you know, wins those two national championships you mentioned at Maryland, Sheehan, but then relatively short time after that, she gets named as a very young head coach at Northwestern to reboot a program that had been dormant for 10 years, and boom, they hop back onto the scene in 2002, restart the program. They rattle off seven of eight national titles from 05 to 2012. That time beat in the clearing game. Madison Doucette, the junior goalkeeper, out of her cage, and Syracuse capitalizes. Those are those transition goals that just spark a whole team. You can hear the excitement from the sideline and fans. This is it's all about field awareness. And just you can, every ground ball has just been so hard fought between each team and just aggressive pressure right here. Heads up play, Emma Ward with the ball, her head's on a swivel, and beautiful job and finish. Jenny Markey sees the open net, fires it low, and you see the excitement of all the Syracuse players. Well, that's the risk with a 12-woman ride, right? When you've got Madison Doucette basically not being a goalkeeper, out of her cage, being a defender in the ride, you leave the goal open, and Syracuse cashes in in transition. Syracuse, like you mentioned, Jay, really took advantage in transition, and the pressure was there for Northwestern, but if you're not going to get in the hands of Syracuse, match stick to stick, it's going to be really hard to stop that fast break. Delay game at the draw. Warning. 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 We're hearing an official saying a delay game at the draw, so I'm not sure who that warning is on, but the, a warning does serve as a warning for both teams. And then they can issue a green card for that, and that's that one-minute releasable penalty. We spoke with Gary Gitt yesterday, and he said he saw on the Northwestern tape, if they're going to ride with all 12, including the goalie, we're going to try and take advantage of that. His team keenly aware 
had capitalized. So Northwestern got this game started with a goal through Lindsey McCone. Since then, it's four straight for Syracuse. Northwestern got down early in that quarterfinal against Duke, trailed 6-1 in that game. So not a stranger to a slow start. And 13 minutes in for a team that scores more than 20 goals a game, only one to show for today. Great ball movement that draws that shooting space foul. Ball started with Izzy skiing up top, which generates the defense to have a lot of concern for her, put the pressure on, gets down to Koykendall, and then Lauren Gilbert able to get the free position shot. Here's Gilbert, who Kelly Amante Hiller told us is the heartbeat of the team. Trying to make that heart race here on a free position, charges in a lot of contact, and she'll get another opportunity for this. Should get a better hash mark, too. Again, that foul, the hash mark you're awarded is where, closest to where the foul occurs. So she'll be now positioned on the center hash mark. Gilbert one-on-one -on -one with Goldstock. Great save. We saw some terrific goalie performances in the first semifinal. Boston College's Rachel Hall, a career day in goal in the win for the Eagles. Taylor Marino, even at a loss, was terrific. And now Asa Goldstock, early in this game, has made two big-time stops. As a team, you want your goalie just to feel hot, feel confident. Everyone else feeds off of that, especially against a player like Lauren Gilbert. You know all week long they're scouting this Northwestern team. They're worried about Gilbert and Skeen, the two biggest scoring weapons for Northwestern. That's going to be an easy call for the officials. Just any like push into the body. You read the rule book, the rule is you cannot push or displace your opponent. Syracuse has had some early free position opportunities today. Only one for four. That one goes, though. And they're going to count it no. They're going to say she was in the crease in the goal violation of the goal circle. So no goal. Wave it off. Emma Tyrell thought she had scored what would have been five straight for Syracuse. Instead, crease violation. Northwestern has it going the other way. Take a look here. So your stick can go inside the goal circle area, but your feet and your body cannot. And her toe, if your toe is on the line, that's considered in the, in the goal circle area. Give and go. Goldstock somehow got a piece of it. And another crease violation is called on the other end. Goldstock's back-to-back -back saves are amazing. She are non-stick side in that hip area, which if you're being trained as a shooter, they tell you, shoot that off-stick hip area. That's the hardest place for a goalie to make the stop. And she has done it very easily and controlled the ball. And we'll often see her come up to the 50-yard line. She loves to get involved in the clearing game. The entire Syracuse bench was going wild with that stop. They all pointed to Asa Goldstock and said, that's you, that's you, keep doing your thing. Northwestern continuing to be aggressive in the ride. This time, Doucette opting to stay in goal, though, after she was burned earlier in the game. Another whistle here. 
This will be a three seconds violation. Would you see more often in when teams play a zone defense? You have to be within a six length of a player. You can't be in that eight meter area for more than three seconds. Sends Emily Ale to the eight meter. Does not go to goal and then loses possession. Northwestern's been aggressive all afternoon. Commits another foul there. But they've been going hard after that ball since opening whistle. 16 fouls already. We've just played 16 minutes. You hear a lot of those whistles in the midfield. That's the officials count for a foul in the midfield. They're not going to stop the play. They let the team advance. But if there's three fouls in that midfield area, it will be a green card. Great feed inside. Rang it off the pipe. Goldstock was beat. But inches away from the back of that. Skein muscling her way through. Couldn't get those hands free. Izzy Skane, the leading scorer across the country, averaging more than six goals a game, has been held in check. The ride paying off for Northwestern, not giving up on the possession. Can they turn it into a goal, though? Scoreless for the last 16 minutes and counting. Impressive, relentless pressure. You, you have a turnover on your offensive end with a goalie save. You need to make sure you're on that ride, and Northwestern was really one of that ball back. See the fight and heart and hustle there. Northwestern, a team that averages more than 20 goals a game. That's more than three goals a game than any other team in the country. Boston College is number two on that list at 17 goals a game. They're already waiting comfortably in the semifinal. In the final, they'll get the winner of this semifinal. Here's Stain again. Passes off, going low. Gilbert can't get it past Goldstock, and Northwestern backs it up again. Game was wide open in the center, just got to connect on those passes. Here comes Syracuse in transition. Two sets well out of her goal, and Emma Ward makes her pay. Where was Madison Doucette? Got caught on the ride again, and it's the freshman Emma Ward with a great heads-up play. You know they've been watching this all week long in preparation, and now they beat Northwestern twice with Madison Doucette being outside the cage. Syracuse able to push the tempo. Beautiful job, just going downfield. The goal is wide open. Emma Ward knows that. You're being goal guarded by a goalkeeper. And then great job of just getting in front of Doucette and firing that one in. Five-two freshman Emma Ward. She might be small in stature, but she is in huge in delivering goals on the field. You see that played football from age six to twelve, and she played every position. She was like quarterback, linebacker, running back, everything. Really stepped in. One of those players that had to get more playing time, more involved in the offense with the ACL injuries that the Syracuse team has had this year. She and you mentioned it. She's got a nose for the goal, but that goal, that transition goal, started with an excellent play in Asa Goldstock in the cage. She is giving the Syracuse offense so much momentum. Good goalie plays, Dana, just translate into great offense. And when we talked to Asa yesterday, you could just feel the energy again. All the goalkeepers, actually. I mean, no wonder they're some of the best in the nation. So energetic, so excited. Ready to be at this big stage. Asa Goldstock, another one of those players that used her extra year to come back. Her job wasn't done with Syracuse. They wanted to finish what they started. All looking for that national championship. Northwestern has now gone 18 minutes without a goal. Yeah, this is a team that leads the nation in scoring more than 20 a game. What is wrong with 
the Wildcats offense right now. It's eerily similar to their Duke game. I mean, they literally they had some shot opportunities, but just kind of were shooting themselves in the foot. So they just need to take it one at a time. Izzy Skeen, who is the leading goal scorer, needs to get into better rhythm. But it does seem credit to Syracuse defense, which has been great all season long. They've been clogging some of the passing lanes and shooting lanes. Great ride opportunity. They've got another chance. They, this one they need to stick it in score. Izzy Skeen wins it back in attack mode. Great pass. Here's McCone. The pump fake. And then the goal. Patience pays off. Izzy Skein wins the ball back on the ride, and McCone cashes in. She's got both goals for Northwestern. She is so fun to watch. She's scrappy. She does a lot of little things. Sometimes they don't show up in the stat sheet. This goal will. Phenomenal patience, reads the offense defense, but this ride is all about the pressure. They've done this a couple times this afternoon. Izzy Skein, she gets a lot of the, the eyeballs on her. McCone, the patience there. The defense it was there, but they stopped their feet. They stood still. She recognized that. A little hesitation, and then she's able to get herself into a great position. Completely fakes out Asa Goldstock. I got gotcha. So it's been a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde ride for Northwestern, right? That turns it into a goal, Sheehan. But twice we've seen Doucette beat on the ride, so it's how aggressive do you want to be? I mean, right now I keep Doucette back in the cage. I think you'd be totally aggressive in between the 30s, but you need to make sure your goal's protected. But that first pass out, now you just really need to, I liked what Northwestern's done right above the restraining line in trying to get those possessions back. Battle for the ground ball won by Emma Tyrell. Northwestern, not only do they lead the country in goals, they lead the country in draw control. Beaten at the circle, and Syracuse turns it into a goal. This time, it's Emma Tyrell, the little sister of Megan. She stepped up huge with Megan Carney going down. Emma Tyrell has moved on to that attack line. She's fit in seamlessly. Look at that. Lee is a team with 61% shooting percentage. She was more in the midfield role, and as you mentioned, moved down the offensive end, getting a lot more touches. Excellent job here, Emily Ale. Just a nice little give and go. Emma Tyrell, they call her Little Tyrell, did a, a great job. Beautiful finish. Excellent transition goal to answer that Northwestern score. She and you mentioned it, little Tyrell, but as she's gotten more touches and more opportunities, she's really come alive, especially in the tournament. When I talked to Gary Gate yesterday, he mentioned that he was so impressed. She did get good minutes in the beginning of the season, but now she's really come into her own, playing off her sister, and has just been an excellent asset for the Syracuse squad. Well, you look at Syracuse personnel-wise coming into the years, the Orange win another draw control. And Emma Ward and Emma Tyrell, they were just going to be contributors in the midfield, part of what was a lot of midfield depth for Gary Gates. Emily Harris, Chuck, goes down in the opener. She, on paper, the best player on Syracuse. Emma Ward slides up from midfield. Big, big shoes to fill for the freshman. She's unafraid. She believes. She produces. Then Megan Carney, your leading scorer, goes down towards the end of the year. Boom, Emma Tyrell moves in. The belief and the confidence, and it continues. Jenny Markey muscling it home. Tons of contact. And I believe we're going to see a yellow card on this. So this is a double whammy. So for a cross check in the body. So Jay, the goal count. But guess what? Now, Syracuse gets possession at the center draw, and they're a player up. It's a lacrosse and one. <laughs> the orange are rolling, Sheehan. You're driving the cage hard. Watch this aggressive foul, the extension of the arms. And Syracuse extends their lead. It's 7-2 for the orange. We're enjoying championship weekend at Towson, Maryland. The men's semifinals tomorrow, noon Eastern on ESPN2. And for all information for the men's and women's lacrosse championships, you can visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. What a start it's been for Gary Gates' team. A 7-2 lead for Syracuse alongside Sheehan Stanwood, Burt, Dana Boyle. Down on the sideline, I'm Jay Alter. What do you attribute 
to this awesome start for the Orange. They've just been capitalizing. I mean, the, the two goals that were wide open on the net, they've exploited some of the Northwestern pressure. They're doing a great job. In Northwestern, they're in a danger zone right now. They've got three yellow cards. A team's fourth yellow card, after a team's fourth yellow card, it becomes a non-releasable penalty, and that's when you can really string together a lot of goals. So they have to rein in the play. She and you talked about it reining in the play. In the huddle, Kelly Amante Hiller stressed the need to focus. She said you have to focus and you have to play for each other. In that possession, they had two defenders for Northwestern sliding to a Sarah Cruz girl. They've got to communicate and lock it in on defense. This is the third time that Northwestern is a player down. Syracuse two for two in the previous opportunities. Here's Emma Ward. Inside the Cockrell. Spinning through traffic. Somehow escapes it cleanly. Great quick ball movement. A little just pass a little low. Good defensive play. We'll see who it stays with. Looks like it's going to stay with Northwestern. And now the Wildcats can kill the rest of the 59 seconds on the woman up clock. I think this ball's coming back to Syracuse. I, I feel like reading the official's lips, it said that we had a false start. Kelly Amante Hiller is livid on that Northwestern sideline. In search of her eighth national championship as head coach of Northwestern. This is her 12th championship weekend performance. And again, Syracuse patient on the woman up. They get the extra possession out of the false start. And they make the Wildcats pay. It's 8-2 Orange. The Syracuse team, each game, it seems like a different player is picking up the scoring. Emma Tyrell, little T, 40th goal this season. I've been really impressed with the ball movement. We touched on the open, just the motion offense, everyone moving off ball, getting into open spaces, keep the defenses rotating, just capitalizing on the extra players. Clearly some frustration off that call. See the adjustments, Syracuse, they started shooting one for six, then they made some adjustments, seven for eight. And scored in multiple different ways. We've seen the transition goals on a fast break, the open net. This is a first half that I don't think a lot of people saw coming. You knew that Syracuse had the belief from speaking with Gary Gate, and they've been grinding it out without their two leading scorers in Carney and Harris, Chuck, but to have an 8-2 lead on the undefeated Big Ten champions. And we've seen it all season long, though, Jay, just a series of runs, how teams go on a run, and now it's time to, to limit them. So Northwestern has to stop this Syracuse run and then start stringing together their own goals. We mentioned it a few times, but down 6-1 in the quarterfinal last weekend as another foul comes in. They end up winning that game 22-10. Would have never known they were down five goals in that game. And I love what Coach Amani Hiller said. That no one was panicked. She called a timeout. She waited for the TV timeout. Addressed the team. In each game said, we got this. No worries. And then they just rattled off the goals. So it's just time for just a refocus and a reset is what this Northwestern team needs. Limit the fouls and a reset okay. offensively. They're already over their season average. 20 fouls in this first half. Another whistle there. We'll see what they're going to call. I think the Northwestern team with the side. 
simultaneous and is the goalie safe? Getting back. Great call by the officials. That was that simultaneous it's a whistle. And it's all you. Go ahead. It's you. You go. Yep. And when the whistle blows, it used to be that you'd get awarded an eight-meter free position. Now they say if you get that shot off the same time as the whistle, the goal can count, and then also the save will count. So good call there. Syracuse has dominated possession in this first half. Seven minutes to play. Wildcats offense has been starved for opportunities. They got one there and gave it away. Syracuse ball on another cause turnover. This defense is locked in. They are locked in. They're communicating. I do think the passes are off for Northwestern. They have the open looks in there. They just haven't been able to connect. And that's just when you need that extra second. You obviously need to make the pass very crisp, crisp and quick. But you need to take the extra second to make sure that it gets right into the stick. Plenty of room for the Orange to run into. The extra pass award on the doorstep. It's 9-2 Syracuse. The freshman M award delivers again. In a year when so many seniors and fifth years are back, the freshmen have come to play this weekend. Emma Ward being one of them. Really coming on strong. Had six goals against Florida. Great heads up play. Syracuse is moving the ball well, reading the defense. Not much angle there for Emma Ward. She's able to just deliver the shot in. Gets excellent placement and power. Syracuse made the last seven shots. If you're Kelly Amante Hiller, where do you go from here? I, I think it's just a, really just a reset. We know they've got the number one offense in the nation. Izzy Skane leading the way with points per game. They can score. They can come back. But there, there just needs to be just a calm and a refocus. Girardi's into the drop control circle. Same result for Northwestern. This is a team that leads the nation in drop control wins. But they have been stifled in the circle, even when they have won possession, haven't been able to get anything going on the offensive end. Skane falls to the turf. This Northwestern team has been limited to nine shots. So we've talked how strong the Syracuse defense is. But that is stellar to limit them. Syracuse, on the other hand, has gotten off 16 shots. And there's no doubt about it. Syracuse has dominated this first half in every facet of the game. The Orange has completely taken the Wildcats out of their comfort zone. Emma Ward with it again. You just don't believe she's a freshman the way she plays. And part of that is Gary Gate told us he's never in his career treated freshmen like freshmen. He goes, seniors move the goalposts just the same way the freshmen do. I don't, you know, separate by class. A lot of these coaches and programs do, not us. Everybody's treated the exact same way. Oh, I love that. They, they seniors carry the ball, that they don't just give all the dirty work. They all do it. This is Maddie Baxter, another freshman. It's a youth movement here in Towson. It's Syracuse pouring it on Northwestern, 10-2 Orange. The 10th goal of the season. This is one of those players, Maddie Baxter, that Coach Gate has said he's trying to work in the lineup, give her more touches. She's got the game experience, scoring in a semifinal game. Great score from the 8-meter. Syracuse doing this scoring in all sorts of different ways. We've got some pretty quick uh, typists in our truck, she and youth movement on the goal, and boom, graphic right there. In, in a year where it's been dominated by the fifth-year senior, all these players coming back, Gary Gates' team is relying on freshmen and sophomore to will them to the finish line. It's just been amazing. Just, and at this point in the season, these players, they, the coaches will tell you, we can't have them play like freshmen anymore. They can't make those mistakes. But we saw in the first game, Bell Smith for Boston College had an excellent game, especially coming up with some turnovers. Caitlin Wurzberger for North Carolina was phenomenal. And Syracuse just doing the same thing on their end. 
When you talk about the next woman up mentality that Gary Gate runs with his staff, there's also that belief on the sidelines for Syracuse. There is no difference between a freshman and a senior. They want everyone to get involved in the scoring. And Maddie Gaxter to score her 10th goal in a national championship weekend in a semifinal, that's got to speak a lot to the Syracuse offense. You're right. Just gives them more confidence. I mean, you get the good playing minutes for along the season. You have the confidence to take that eight-meter hash and go to goal and score. What a great play. Ella Simpkins, so underrated. The fifth-year senior out of Centerport, New York. She's good on the wing. She's great on defense. That's her 33rd cost turnover of the year. You know, we mentioned the youth movement filling in for Harris, Chuck, and Carney offensively. But this is actually a very veteran defense. And they are showing up to play against the best offense in the country statistically. They have locked them down at this first half. A lot of veteran leadership. Syracuse had so many players come back for their extra COVID year this year. And Asa Goldstock in the, in the goalie to have a, a fifth year back there is huge. It's another hard foul. Looks like no call. A late whistle, and I think it's because Emma Tyrell stayed down. It looked like it might have been to the head. She's, she's holding it. And as we saw in the first semifinal, she, whether it's intentional or, or not, any hit to the head should be yellow carded. That was not a hit to the head, though. Certainly a lot of contact. Lot I don't know if it should be yellow carded, but looked like it should have been an eight meter for the orange. The Northwestern just out of rhythm right now. That's a simple pass of the clearing game. Executed poorly. Let's see if they can find something here. In the last three minutes and 30 seconds of the first half. 9 shots, 7 turnovers. That is not a recipe to win a championship weekend. We're going to see another yellow car. I mean, this is another check to the head, official signaling. This one's going to go on Brennan Dwyer. So this is the fourth yellow card for Northwestern. So this penalty becomes non-releasable. No, I think they. Or is that on it? What? It, it, they called it against Syracuse. Okay, Syracuse. Yes. Okay. Dwyer just running off substitution. So it will re remain Northwestern's ball. So but it, it is a yellow card. It's a woman up for two minutes for Northwestern. Deciding to rip it on goal. You'll see a lot of players take it out for that two-minute penalty. Instead, Northwestern fires it on the eight-meter. Much needed goal for the Wildcats as they try and build some momentum headed into halftime. And I think that's a good play right there. I mean, off the eighth meter, you should have a great scoring percentage. So sometimes don't wait to let the player up advantage happen. Great step and rip. Now, Northwestern, you just string together some possessions here. And for Syracuse, Grace Fahey was the one that got the yellow card. That's her second yellow card of the game, so she is removed for the rest of the game. Two yellow cards you have to be, you're out. Mischewski wins it to herself again. She's been terrific in the draw control circle for Syracuse. Again, this will be a free position for the senior. 
And she and we keep saying, you know, this is an opportunity for Northwestern. After the goal, the string momentum. Can't string momentum without the ball. Yeah, they're going to come up with, need to come up with ways without fouling, trying to get the ball back. They make it look like you're going to be open and be able to get a shot off. Then they easily collapse. Nice stick on stick, trying to affect that shot. That's exactly what you're taught to do. Run it at an angle, get your stick up there, try to deflect the shot. Here's Megan Tyrell trying to get those hands free. Offensive foul. That's what Syracuse needed right there. Well, that's what Northwestern needed for Syracuse to do, to come up with that turnover. They get called the charge. It was Jill Girardi who took the pain to get the game there. <laughs> you want, I mean, as a defense, you have to come up with ways. You're getting called for the foul, so make them foul against you. Get po your position established. As a defender, you're entitled to your positioning. Here's Izzy Skane. Really quiet in this first half for a player that averages more than six goals a game. Here's Skane trying to make something happen. There it is! A flamethrower from the stick of Izzy Skane. Her first goal today. 95 now on the season. It was already a Northwestern record for most of the season. She's now five away from tying Courtney Murphy all time. Any player for most in Division One in a single season. Oh, this is a great look here. Just seeing what she's seeing going to goal. She goes extremely hard. She doesn't slow down, but she reads when the defense is about to collapse. And either she's able to change direction with her body or release the shot. Big Ten attacker of the year. She's just able to get, she fires a lot of shots. And she just gets her hands free. She can shoot from long range. I've seen her score from outside the eight meter. It's that IQ, she and Her IQ is incredible. The ability for her to create her own space. And oftentimes you see players, when they will to find the back of the net, they could potentially foul, but she just has an excellent job and eye for the cage and when space is open. She goes so hard. I think she dodges the cage harder than anybody. All the uh, great players we've seen out here have so many different types of strengths. But I love Izzy Skeen's ability just to run hard, not slow down. Uses her body so well. Syracuse could hold for the last shot of the half if they choose to do so. Dominated possession, dominated the draw control circle, and right now dominating the scoreboard. Had the lead as large as eight, it was 10 to two. Northwestern's pulled two back. Sam Swart got the hands free, rang it off the pipe, battling for the loose ball. It'll stay with Syracuse, clock will run out though. We're at zeros, let's see if the officials decide to put some time on the clock, no. 55 needed to start with it, that's why I was starting it. I had a push on it, if you were down with ball, I was up on it. So the Big Ten champions, Kelly Amante Hiller at Northwestern. Their backs are against the wall, Sheehan. Only four goals in the first half for a team that averages more than 20 a game, more than any team in the country. Credit Syracuse defensively. They locked down Izzy Skane. It, it took her 29 minutes to get on the scoreboard. Uh, yeah, they've limited the, the shots too. Northwestern just 11 shots on the day. Syracuse has been able to rip off 20. But the good news, I think Northwestern, they know they can score. They've been down this game. Let's send it down to Dana Boyle, who's standing by with Syracuse head coach Gary Gate. Gary Gate, first great first half for your team. What's impressed you most about the first half offensively? Uh, it, it, we are uh, finishing pretty well on our shots, and we're getting some good looks. Um, we've had a few mental errors. I think both teams have uh, so far, but uh, 
we got to stay focused, uh, zero out the game, and start over again. So in that second half, Asa Goldstock, how important it is for her to come out on fire? You know, it was awesome. She would make some saves early. She always plays well when she does that. So um, hopefully she'll do the same in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Dana, wait till after the game, but can you ask him where he got the overcoat from? Because that is sharp. And Syracuse is playing yeah. real sharp to a 10-4 lead for the Orange in the semifinal. As eight, their largest deficit of the season, and Dana Boyle checked in with their head coach at halftime. Coming out of the locker room, Kelly Amante Hiller really stressed the need to get the possession. And it's not only a tactical skill, but it also involves a lot of heart and hustle. And in order to get the draw, they need to put the ball in the back of the net. And that's going to take every single player on the offensive end, even players that come off the bench, to really will them past Syracuse here in the second half. It's going to be big. Easier said than done, Sheen, but how would you approach trying to break down this Syracuse defense that, that proved really stingy in that first half? Well, you know, Gary Gates told us himself that the way they get beat is by ball movement. They don't get beat by the dodging up top. So it's good ball movement against them, finding players on the inside. Northwestern has had some good looks, not many of them inside, because Syracuse has kind of limited their touches. But get that ball movement, get the, get the defense spinning. And it's worth noting as the second half has begun, Shia, the Northwestern committed three yellow cards in that first half. So every yellow card from here on out that the Wildcats commit will be a two-minute unreleasable penalty. So they've really got to clean up the fouling in the second half as well. Definitely has to be a point of emphasis because that's when teams can really extend the lead. Curling around the cage, great save. Asa Goldstock picking up where she left off of the first half. Gets it in transition quickly with Sierra Cockrell. Swatted at from behind, stays with it though. Cockrell, full head of speed, all the way to goal. Everything but the finish for Sierra Cockrell. Battle for the ground ball won by the Orange. It'll stay with SU. scoring for Syracuse and a lot coming from the freshman Emma Ward, Jenna Markey, Emma, Emma Tyrell's a sophomore, great takeaway from Northwestern. Love that handle for Lindsay McCone, extension of the arms, takes that seamlessly running down the field. Here's Skein, goes to work in attack mode, got those hands free. Couldn't bury it, though. Sammy Mueller circles it around. McCone now. Back to Mueller. The transfer from Virginia. Here she is, 22 in white. And a penalty called off the ball. Walk up with the ball, please, 22. So this will be a foul against Sam Swart that sends... Sammy Mueller to the 8 meter. Passes off the skein. Rear back and fires. Easy skein. Her second goal of the day beats Goldstock again, and it's three straight goals for Northwestern. Her ability to shoot in traffic is really impressive. There's three blue jerseys in front of her, but she's able to get that shot off and find the shooting lane. Get it off cleanly. Such strength, such, such power. Great look here to see what she's seeing. She sees the defense does not collapse on her. She senses that, knows it's time to rip. Such power off stick side on Asa Goldstock. And her second goal of the day, she now matches Charlotte North, who had two goals in the first semifinal. The race to 100 and the single season goal record, which is conveniently 100 goals in a season set by Courtney Murphy of Stony Brook in 2016. You know, talking to North and Skane this week, they could care less about the goal record. They just want the championship. Any goal, I think they both will say, so humble, both these scores, they deflect all the offense, always praising their other teammates. 
And it does. Not one person can beat an entire defense. So it requires your teammates giving you the ball, making great passing lanes, but they're just so humble, and they'll do anything it takes for their team to win. Somebody went early. They're going to give it to Syracuse. The deflector of the weekend, though, goes to you every time I try and bring up the Hall of Fame induction. I thought we were not talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Syracuse wins possession, doubling up Northwestern 10-5. to The lead was 10-2, to though, so it shrunk to just a five-goal lead for Gary Gates' team. How do you balance the fine line of you want to be patient, protect the five-goal lead, but you can't take your foot off the gas? Definitely can't take your foot off. This is a, the number one offense in the nation, Northwestern. So you, I actually, you know, I think you keep attacking. When the opportunities present themselves, you're not worrying about extending the clock. You're still going, attacking when you need to. We've talked about it all season long, how just teams can score. It's a game of runs. We're going to see a check across the body. And Megan Tyrell is a little slow to get up. You're going behind. Center hash mark, please. On the body. 18, you're here. Staying with us. Sure? Yeah? Okay. Walk it off, you need. Here's Megan Tyrell, the junior. One on one with Doucette. Already two goals today for Tyrell. And now she's got a hat trick. Megan Tyrell cashes in on the eight meter opportunity. It's Syracuse back up by six. Once again, Syracuse able to capitalize on the Northwestern fouls. They've been really good coming off the eight meter. They had two player up goals in that first half. Megan Tyrell, when you get fouls offensive player, you want to make the other team pay. Excellent placement of the shot. Gets that off before the stick's able to make contact from her, the defenders crashing in on her. Five points already today. And Megan Tyrell, another one of those players that's come on so strong as of late. Really embraced just being the leader of this offense. And she's been tasked with having to get some of those younger players that we talked about all first half up to speed. Working with Emma Ward, working with her sister Emma Tyrell, just getting more players involved. We were speaking with Megan Tyrell and Asa Goldstock yesterday, and Asa said when Emily Harris-Chuck went down after the first game of the season, she texted Megan Tyrell, you need to step up, and she wrote back, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> and she has. She has delivered 107 points in her junior season. And now Northwestern trying to answer right back with a free position of their own. But your feet still are now. Thank you. Koikendahl from an awkward angle decides to just circle it around with Mueller. Here's Lauren Gilbert, very quiet, the senior out of Lake Oswego, Oregon. 65 goals for number one in white this season, none today. Good handle there. We've seen a lot of the passes, though, just handcuffing the players when you throw it into their body. They were able to maintain possession. Game. And that's a pass she'll complete 99 times out of 100 in the regular season. Can't connect with Sammy Mueller. And it's a turnover. But they get it back. Mueller didn't give up on the possession. Can't turn the takeaway into a goal, though. Those are the ones you have to finish if you're Northwestern. And that's those momentum goals. If you get that off the turnover. But they've been, in Northwestern, they've been impressive with the ride, putting pressure on. Keeping Doucette in cage, I think, is a, a smart move as they were burned twice in that first half when they left the goalkeeper outside the cage by Syracuse. Go between Baxter and Quimby. Ms. Fires. Megan Tyrell there to back it up, though. She has three of the Oranges, 11.
Dangerous pass, and a whistle comes in for a shove of the back. And again, putting Syracuse on the eight meter. So the fouls, that's something that you need to just rein in. We've seen the way the officials are calling this game. It's a push into the body. It's a good call there. But it gets Syracuse back at the eight meter in the center hash mark. Where they are three for seven on the day. Make it four of eight. Bianca Chevron, the sophomore out of Canada. And the Orange with back-to-back -back goals. Now 12-5 SU. Lots of different players contributing in the Syracuse offense. Capitalizing, beautiful place in the shot. Look, Doucette goes in the slit, does everything she can to try to stop this. Beautiful placement right on that far pipe. Beautiful placement, and that goal was possible because the ball was in multiple players at six for Syracuse offense. That's where they're dynamic the most, and when I spoke with Kelly Amante Hiller, she said that defensively, we need to match Syracuse's offense, get in their hands, and limit them from finding the cage. She and you're the expert, I'm not, but if I'm looking at this game, Northwestern just has to stop fouling. Yeah, the fouls are, are definitely of concern right now, especially because it's the type of foul. So sometimes when they put the stats up with a number of fouls, you don't know what they're calling. Is it an empty stick check in the midfield that doesn't mean anything? What is being counted? When you're fouling and you're putting teams on the eight meter and you're getting yellow cards when you're uh, giving a woman up opportunities, those are big time fouls and Northwestern's committed quite a few of those. More than five minutes into this second half, the Wildcats still searching for the offensive rhythm. An offense that scored more than any other team in the country. Good opportunity there, here. Gilbert draws Number a whistle. Hash, Gilbert was wide open inside there. Is able to get that pass, connect cleanly, and get the foul. There's nobody more you want on the eight-meter arc than Lauren Gilbert. She's nearly perfect on the season, 24 of 32 in her free position opportunities. Goes low and scores! Lauren Gilbert, the senior, fires it past Asa Goldstock and pulls a goal back for Northwestern. She is so clutch. 66 goal this season. One of the fastest first steps in the game. She's so fit, she's so fast, explodes off the eight meter. Beautiful job. What she does is she moves over to her left hand side and that just gives her right hand more freedom. She's able to go right into the cage, drops her stick low, gets separation, great fake and finish. A much needed goal for Northwestern. Kelly Monty Hiller's been known to find talent all over the place. Lauren Gilbert comes from Oregon. She told me that she remembers her coming to a Northwestern camp. She wore a really bright colored shirt and she just stood out, knew that she wanted her to be on this Northwestern team, developed her confidence, and just has done an awesome job on the offensive end for Northwestern this season. They need her to start getting hot right now. Monty Hiller calls Gilbert the heartbeat of this Northwestern team. Well, in the first half, it was a heartbeat that you thought might might stop. Can we get it hooked on something. Yank an arm. Syracuse was up right, 10 go. to 2 Hiller. at one point. Northwestern's taken an eight-goal deficit. Deficit had turned into a six-goal Syracuse lead. Another draw control win. Ella Simpkins, one of the most underrated players in the country. She just does all the little things that don't show up in the box score. Almost led to quick offense there for SU. Emma Ward there to back it up. It's great getting those second chance opportunities. The rebounds off the shots, coming up with those ground balls, just extending the possession. Swart trying to pick up that ground ball. Gets the help from the official. So you're the Fox. Beat inside. Double team comes in on Tyrell. She'll head to the eight meter. 
So they just defensively, what you need to do there, you have the two Northwestern bodies that come and collapse inside. You hold your position, get your stick up. But once you start to extend your, extend your arms and push, that's what's going to be the eight-meter foul. So Here's Megan Tyrell, blows it past Madison to set. The junior's fourth goal of the afternoon at Syracuse extends its lead to seven. Love it, a little duck, duck, goose. Took me a while to figure out what that game was again. I couldn't remember, but the celebrations this year have been phenomenal and for good reason. Megan Tyrell explodes. Look at that excellent place in the shot. It is stick side, but just the sort of speed and strength gets it past Doucette. This Syracuse offense is just really, everything seems to be clicking from them. From assisting plays, drawing the foul, six points already today for the junior. Someone moved early. That's going to be a whistle. We'll see. And it's going to be Syracuse's ball. Got to wait for that official whistle, but a quick turnover. Yeah, the Orange give it right away. Exactly what Northwestern needed. Should we hear a lot of coaches say over the course of the season, well, we're getting better every day. With Syracuse, you're seeing it. They really are. When you look at this team, when they went into the ACC tournament, they had not played without Meg Carney. They didn't know how. They had to find themselves again offensively. And... You look at how they've played throughout the NCAA tournament. After only scoring four goals in the ACC championship against North Carolina, they put 20 on Loyola, 17 on a really good Florida team. They're dialed in today, already 13 goals. Sometimes those losses are the best things you can, that can happen to a team. If you can learn something from them, if they can expose your weaknesses, that's great. Good handle by Brennan Dwyer. Northwestern's back against the wall, trailing by seven. More than 22 minutes to go. Great look there. Couldn't find the back of the net. Sammy Mueller. You can hear fear. They know Corkendall wants to feed that ball in white. You want to try to get stick on stick, limit those assisting plays. Wow! What a save! Asa Goldstock delivers again. The goalies have come to play. That was beautiful. Seven saves for both goaltenders today. Amazing save by Asa Goldstock. But what I love most about this is the Syracuse defense. They're locked in and they're honed in on playing in front of Asa Goldstock. That was a team effort. And you can hear Coach DeFelice from the sidelines saying, there's a shooter, there's a feeder. So they're locked in defensively to really stop this Northwestern offense. They turn good defense into a goal on the other end. What a semifinal performance this has been for Syracuse. Great save from Asa Goldstock. Gets a great goal by Emma Tyrell. Timeout Northwestern. You can see the smile, the celebration. There's still a lot of time left to play. Look how spread out. Just beautiful job finding the team. Emma Tyrell just sees that spacing. That's one of the things I love about the Syracuse offense the most. When they're working with the motion, they create those passing lanes. They do not get clogged in there. They give you the ability to dodge and go to the cage. If they find the double, that's when they look for the slim pass. That's when they look for the assisting play. But if not, it gives a very easy score. Still 21 minutes, 25 seconds left. Plenty of time if you're Northwestern, only down eight. But, Sheehan, it's interesting. Coming into this weekend, everything I read, everything I listened to was can't wait for North Carolina and Northwestern. The two undefeated teams, they'll finally settle it on the field. Who's the best team? Well, Boston College beats North Carolina at semifinal number one. And then Syracuse, who, with all their injuries, seemingly everybody had written them off this season except them. They have delivered. We might get a rematch of an ACC semifinal in the national championship. <laughs> They've been very familiar with each other. 
I oftentimes think that when you are the lower seeded team, you've got an advantage. You come in with a chip on your shoulder, you know everyone else is talking about you, and that just becomes part of the storyline. Boston College surely embraced it. Today, everyone's Northwestern comes in here. They're undefeated, number one offense in the nation. And Syracuse, all season long, they've been wanting something to prove. Every time one of their players went down with an injury, people said, well, they're done. They can't, you can't rebound after losing Emily Harris. Chuck, oh, what a year it could have been. Megan Carney goes down. Same thing. And they've just been able to adjust. Gary Gates told us about a lot of the visualization that his team does, building the confidence. And you go to any of these programs, you go to you want to start you're getting recruited by these coaches you want to go start so when we say ne next woman up it's really is the truth you've got talented highly recruited players that want their time to shine here's izzy skane weaving through traffic puts it on cage a whistle after the shot will keep this possession alive for northwestern and that's a hard foul izzy skane down on the field Take another look. Swiping check and then a push on the body. Skein takes a while to get up. Two goals today for Skein. Passes out of the free position. And Northwestern gives it away. Carey DeFelice picks up the ground ball. Northwestern just continue to look out of rhythm offensively. Putting themselves in decent spots, just can't get that finishing touch. Call a block on Northwestern. That's going to be Syracuse's ball still. Yeah, these, I mean, it, when you watch Northwestern play this season, those tic-tac-toe pa passes, feeds inside, were connecting. And today they have been struggling getting a good, lot of those good feeds off. and you're exactly right, Northwestern. They usually love to thread the needle in the middle, but Syracuse defensively is making it almost seem open, one step behind, and then they're jumping to will themselves to get that ball. You're so right, Dana, and that's what I think the Syracuse defense does. They make you, they like kind of lull you into sleep. Oh, you're wide open in there. They crash inside. But even some of the Northwestern passes, they are not even delivering. They're some hitting the ground a little too high. So easy mistakes that they can clean up. Still plenty of time left to go. But Northwestern, they got to start now, stringing together some goals. See a shooting space 32. violation. 32! You want there? 22 over there. Good, 20. Behind her, please, 32. Stand to your cut. Stand to your cut. Stand to Driving in, Syracuse got a piece of it, but not enough. Northwestern finally finds the back of the net, a goal they desperately needed. We've seen a lot of players take that hanging hash and n opt not to go to goal and score. But Sammy Mueller, the grad student, transfer from your University of Virginia, she knows that they need this goal. She drives hard to cage, protects that stick, and fires one in. Northwestern gets one goal closer, Syracuse with the lead, 14-7. Syracuse up a touchdown, 14-7, and Megan Tyrell has led the way, Sheehan. She's phenomenal, her ability to slip into space, but I've been impressed with this whole Syracuse offense. The ball movement, the assisting plays, finding the seams, just getting the open passes, and Megan Tyrell, who stepped up this year, Gets a lot of credit, but she deserves a ton for what she's done for the Syracuse offense, leading the way in goal scoring. Four goals on five shots. I mean, she, they know about her. You know, you're scouting these players. Just the effectiveness that we've seen from a lot of these offensive players this season. So good at shooting, picking their shots. And her little sister, Emma Tyrell's added three goals as well. So seven goals, two assists for House Tyrell. Another draw control win from Ella Sipkin. Syracuse has been di dynamite on the draw, totally dialed in as Emma Tyrell clears it through traffic. And that's been an area we've talked to the Syracuse coaching staff, that they slow motion, they put the draws in slow motion of opposing teams, they really scout it. Here's Skane back the other way. 
Couldn't get it cleanly. Somehow flung it forward to Mueller. They now whistle it back to the foul that came against Skane. I don't think the Northwestern sideline's happy with that. They're blowing the play dead. There's a player down low. We'll have to get something from Dana over there. What's going on? I think we heard it from here. How do you call that? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Izzy Skein, fires it past Asa Goldstock. It's a hat trick for Izzy Skein in Northwestern. Only down six. Well, the good news for Northwestern, they were able to capitalize on that, and Skein gets her third of the day. 97th goal in that race to 100 to beat the NCAA record. Just explodes. Great placement of the shot. You see Goldstock has a great view. Comes out high in that Gold Creek circle area. Justin Jr., one of the five Tawaraton finalists. Big Ten attacker of the year. Came on the scene. She was huge as a, as a freshman. Just has gotten better each year developing different aspects of her game. But this year she has been so tough to stop. So with that goal, Izzy Skein jumps ahead of Charlotte North. It goal scored in a single season by one. The difference is Charlotte North already sitting comfortably in the championship after beating North Carolina earlier today. Izzy Skein and her teammates have their work cut out for them. 19 minutes ago, trailing by six. Struggling at the draw control circle. Here's Emma Tyrell, burst of speed, passes it off. Emma Ward, the Emma Show on full display in Towson. And the freshman Emma Ward delivers again. Beautiful transition play. It is so hard defensively to do that. You're coming down in transition. You could see the defense for Northwestern trying to hold, knowing that they're going to leave Emma Ward open. But you've got to stay a little bit longer. Emma Tyrell comes ahead of Steve, protects that stick. You can see all the sticks swinging. But Ward wide open, and she takes that extra, extra second that great attackers do. The fake high, pumps it low. Such poise. Seems like every time Northwestern tries to string together a goal or gets an answer, Syracuse responds right back. If we didn't have the scoreboard yeah, on and you just looked Delay. at Gary Not Gate, you would never know if they were either green up by seven white, goals or down by seven goals or anywhere in between. Blue ball. We see a delay of game issued against Northwestern. So that'll be a green card, which is a one-minute releasable penalty. Not enough players on the field for Northwestern. Mental mistake in the national semifinal. Trailing by seven, Kelly Amonti Hiller, a, a nine-time national champion. She knows you can't win a national championship making mental mistakes at a big spot. Moment up for one minute. seconds left on the extra woman opportunity. Great feed, Emma Ward, the finish not there from Emily L. Backed up from Megan Tyrell, 10 seconds left on the penalty, 35 seconds left on the shot clock. Back to even strength. What a, oh, into the side netting. Thought it was a quick stick finish for a second. And Ward gives it to Northwestern, unable to back it up. All the Syracuse fans also thought that that was a goal as well. A nice turnover. Almost. Yep. Wow. Northwestern sloppily gives it away. 
what a handle and that's big hit there. It's getting that very physical, card. yeah. You can hear when that big whistle. 55 blue, prospect yellow. So this gives Northwestern an opportunity, two minute woman out. Jill Girardi, number 15 in white, just so great. Does excellent on the draw control, gets that handle, draws that foul, cross check into the body. Big opportunity here for Northwestern. We keep saying, well, Northwestern has plenty of time, plenty of time, and they do, but at some point you have to start chipping away at that Syracuse lead. What a save. Full split. Asa Goldstock standing on her head. We said it earlier, it's the year of the goalie, and Asa Goldstock continues to prove it. She gets a save, deep release, gets the rebound, and the transition is moving. Not, I think a smart move, though, not to push it up, just to slow it down a little bit, get the right personnel on. And Northwestern looks like they're going to start sending the double team in the ball. They realize they got to get possession back. Big hit 15. from behind. 15. Syracuse was going to goal, a woman down. This one called against Girardi. And 15 for yellow card is going to be issued to Northwestern. I believe they're saying it's a check to the head. So this is now going to be an unreleasable. Yes. Give me a minute. Oh, Give Girardi's minute. upset. Yep. And that'll be her second yellow card. So she is, is done for the game as well. And she is a much needed huge factor for this Northwestern team. Five for nine on free positions today. Megan Tyrell, an opportunity. Decides to pass out of it to her sister, Emma. Syracuse in no rush. They have a fresh shot clock. It'll be even strength, five on five for about 50 more seconds so that Syracuse will actually move woman up. Here's Sam Swart. Great save, Madison Doucette, keeping her Wildcats in it. Good play by Emma Ward trying to get that check. The check called for in the body. So Northwestern, they get possession. I'm Northwestern, I would attack in a hurry. You're even strength right now. You're actually going to go woman down in five seconds. You're right. I mean, they don't have much time. They need to go. 15 minutes still a lot of time left, but you really want to make sure your possessions count. So I start attacking. Syracuse now woman up. Northwestern missed their window. Now trying to attack a woman down. That's a tough task against the Syracuse defense. Midway through the second half, the Orange all over Izzy Skane in this Northwestern offense. Skane weaving through it. <laughs> Finally, a whistle comes in. Offensive foul. They call it against Izzy Skane. Wow. I don't know. Well, I'll have to look at that again. It didn't look like a charge to me. The official's right there next to the play, however, but somehow Izzy Skeen was able to get through all that traffic. And with that offensive foul, 40 fouls against Northwestern. They average 19. They get the ball off the ride and cash in. That's exactly what the Wildcats were looking for. Northwestern scores a woman down. Aaron Koikendahl there to pay it off, but this all starts with an aggressive ride. Koykendall, the assisting leader for this Northwestern team. She takes her time here. Great heads up play. Beautiful control. And then Koykendall, watch her fakes. Excellent placement. Goldstock comes up high. She's able to see the net. Oftentimes the goalies come out high. You freak out a little bit because you often shoot right into the stick. She's able to freeze her a little bit, shoot to the space. 
big score. Awesome hustle play by Northwestern. And what I love most about that goal, Sammy Mueller, this is why you don't give up in the ride. This is why, as an attacker, you've got to pressure all the way. And that caused turnover led to a goal. And when we were coming out of the halftime with Kelly Amante Hiller, she said, take advantage of the opportunities you get. And when you get a chance in front of the cage, you have to shoot around Asa Goldstock. And she did just that. You're so right, and even just in transition, when everyone's going downfield trying to clear the ball, when you're able to be aggressive on the ride, there's so many less players. I mean, Northwestern struggled in the settled offense to get good looks on cage, but there, a lot of less players on the field, and Koykendall is able to cash it in. Northwestern has to start winning the draw control battle. Syracuse 14, Northwestern 9 in the circle today. Wildcats win this one, though. Confident from Brennan Dwyer in the circle. Can they string a couple of goals together for the first time today? Down, but certainly not out at this national semifinal. BC awaiting the winner. We've got 14 minutes left in regulation. Tough angle for Izzy Skane. Syracuse, easy interception there. Northwestern just threw it away. Alice Simpkins credited with the takeaway, but she almost didn't know it was coming. It just ended up <laughs> at her stick. You love that as a defender, and Simpkins, but she puts herself in the right place at the right time, comes up with those big plays. Well, she's been outstanding all year, and certainly highlighted today 32 in Navy on the draw control circle on defense for Syracuse fifth year player at a center port New York you can see Northwestern just amping up the defensive pressure they understand they need the ball they got to be careful not to get yellow cards though when they start being aggressive every yellow card from here on out will be a two minute unreleasable penalty against the Wildcats they've already committed four Got the footwork, Chevery beat two defenders. Up. You see the official, it looks like she's signaling a player towards her. Is she reaching for the yellow card? And she is, another yellow 45. card. 45. Extension of the arm. Doubt Chevrolet goes to goal here, right? We get the fresh 90 on the shot clock once you have a yellow card. So I wouldn't be surprised if she opts to pull it out. Although it is unreleasable, so there's, is no, unreleasable. Right, there's no penalty, I guess, for going for it. But they do decide to reset the attack, leading by six. And woman up for the next two minutes. It is unreleasable, but you definitely can frustrate the offense by just can maintaining possession. They need the ball back. Six yellow cards for Northwestern. Great takeaway. A woman down doesn't matter. Northwestern continues to battle on. This is Ali Palermo. The senior, beautiful cross field pass. Izzy Skane, moving like a train, draws the free position opportunity. She's fired up. You can see it in her face. Already three goals today. Look at the take. Northwestern within five goals here. The time is now. Palermo, the leader of the defense, able to create this one. Izzy Skane is dangerous. Sometimes she opts just to one step and rip. Looks like she's going to charge in on this one. She charges. Somebody left early. There was a whistle. 26 out of the eight. You and your it was Sarah Cooper okay, called so for a false start. When you're in here, you're in. That's what you were last time. They've been warned on this. Feet outside that eight-meter area. Here's Skane. Patience on that. 
can't score, and Northwestern can't back it up. Great positioning from Maddie Baxter, the freshman, to win that ball for Syracuse. And now the Orange could move quickly. There's still a woman up for the next minute. Potentially a huge sequence in this game. Northwestern an opportunity with Izzy Skein, the nation's leading scorer, at the eight meter. An opportunity to make it a five goal game. Instead, Syracuse back the other way. They can make it a seven goal game if they cash in on this extra woman opportunity. And number six. You can see number six in white right in the middle. They're calling three seconds violation, which becomes an eight meter opportunity. Syracuse has been great off the eight. Five of nine goals off their eight meter opportunities. This is Emma Tyrell, darts in, off the pipe, no good. Northwestern scoops up the ground ball. Wildcats, you can feel the sense of urgency building for Northwestern. And that's what you want if you're Northwestern. Get them on the eight meter, hope they take the shot, hope you come up with a save, let's see if they can push this transition. Here's Lauren Gilbert, showing off the speed. Now camping out on the crease. Number one in white was calling for it. They didn't feed it to her. Instead to Izzy Skein. Trying to get those hands free. Can't do it. Lockdown defense for Syracuse continues. And Northwestern. Can McCone save it? No. I think they're saying she stepped out. Even though the ball stayed in, I, be I believe what the official signaling is that McCone's feet were outside the end line there. The costly pass, you see there's a lot of errant passes for Northwestern today. Unforced errors from the Big Ten champions. Two teams enter championship weekend undefeated. We've already seen North Carolina go down in semifinal number one at the hands of Boston College. Now Syracuse trying to pull the second upset of the day. What a check and take away. Palermo again. She's been relentless, the senior defender. Her third cause turnover. She is willing this Wildcats defense herself. Can they cash in on the other end? That's the burning question. Feed from Skein. It's a good one. Leads to a goal. Jane Hansen right on the money. And Northwestern back within five. Aza Gold Sox furious. What a thrilling start to championship weekend we've had here in Towson. Syracuse leading Northwestern 15 to 10. The men take over tomorrow with their semifinal starting at noon over on ESPN2. And for all information regarding the men's and women's lacrosse championships, head over to NCAA.com, serving all 90 NCAA championships. Take a look at that bracket. Number one, North Carolina, the top-seeded Tar Heels, a program record win streak snapped by Boston College. It's the Eagles' fourth straight championship appearance, but they've never won it. They've never won it. They've been making some changes along the way. They are hungry for it. Some different personnel in there. Charlotte North, Rachel Hall, and Cage, both transfers, making their first championship weekend. Good play, but Lauren Gilbert. Syracuse, a five-goal lead, a little more than nine minutes away from what would be their third championship appearance. Neither Boston College nor Syracuse has ever won a national championship, but Northwestern, they don't want to talk about that storyline quite yet. Still nine minutes to go, and with Izzy Skein on the field, anything can happen. Here's Skein passing out. 
Last time Northwestern won was 2012. So these players, they want to make their own mark for Northwestern. Finally feels like they're getting some momentum. Feet inside again, shoveling it in, back-to-back -back goals, Jane Hansen from the same spot, camping in front of the crease, beats the Syracuse zone in Goldstock, what a play this is. to back goals for Jane Hansen, but that goal started with the ground ball by Gilbert, and then she just does an excellent job of evading her defenders. She's got her back to her, does a little twist with her stick, able to get right past Asa Goldstock. That's what Northwestern needs here in the second half with eight minutes and 30 seconds left. I don't know how she was able to keep, keep that ball in her stick, does a little twizzler shot, goes through the pressure. Huge goal for Northwestern. Feels like they got some life. It felt like the game was out of reach and they've strung together a couple plays. Syracuse has not scored since the 1854 mark. More than 10 minutes without a goal. You can hear Northwestern. Here they come. Looking for another goal. Lost it at the crucial moment. Steve Felice scoops it up for the Orange. You just got the feeling that if Northwestern scores that goal right off the draw to make it a three goal, it, this place would have erupted. The Northwestern faithful making the trip. Smart timeout from Gary Gay. Very smart. And uh, the Syracuse got very lucky that that pass did not connect. This is why you don't take your foot off the gas at Syracuse. And I don't think they did. They were still uh, trying to go to goal. Northwestern just was able to string together a couple of good plays together, get some goals in. But... Plenty of time for this offensive mastermind, Gary Gate, to come up with a plan to get their more goals on their board and Northwestern on the other side. Great coaching staff as well. They want to climb back. Gary Gate took the job 14 years ago. They had never been to championship weekend. This is their eighth appearance in those 14 years. Their record of the semifinal, just two and five. And in those two wins, they failed to win a national championship. I'm going to steal a line that Acacia Walker Weinstein, the head coach of Boston College, told us. She goes, the best team does not always win a national championship. It's just the team that gets the championship weekend and finds a way to win two games. Gary Gate, ro healthy roster-wise, would tell you this is not the most talented Syracuse team he's coached, but they could be the ones, the belief that this program has in these players could be the ones to get it done. Gary Gate talked about it in the timeout. He said, remain calm, play your game, and do the little things really well. So he's going to will this team to, to take it out and really hone in on what Syracuse has been doing well. He said, remain calm and get the next possession and get the next goal. Northwestern putting on the pressure. They've got their goalkeeper up above the 50-yard line. Yeah, Doucette is way out of her cage. She's going to have to sprint back. Here's Dee Felice. And right now, they, they need possession of the ball. Doucette. Yeah, Doucette's already been caught out <laughs> twice. But Northwestern, a relentless ride, gets the ball back. Now Syracuse is in trouble. It's a four-on-one. Izzy Skane feeds it across. Another errant pass. Northwestern's been inches away in the passing game to getting some good looks. Missing that finishing touch, that piece of quality, if you will, that could deliver a goal. I thought Skeen should have taken that, taken that one. Oh, they're beautiful. Now she does, and it leads to a goal. Izzy Skeen. A human highlight reel. The nation's leading scorer shows why in a critical moment. Fans love it. Northwestern, they didn't doubt themselves, climbing back, beautiful. She was going to rip that from the 8 meter, realized I had a lane to go. Kept on going, awesome pursuit. Somehow she's just able to penetrate the defense and just find the lanes and go to cage. Goes to the ground. 
her shooting as she's falling, I think, gets Goldstock just to fall to the ground. And she's able to slip that one by. Seven points, four goals, three assists for Izzy Skeen. She'll need a couple more today to get Northwestern back in this game. She and you mentioned it, but her ability to split that double team was absolutely incredible and possess the ball. There's a reason why they call her the Skein train. Izzy Skein on that goal. The entire Northwestern bench jumped up. The energy is up on the sidelines. Kelly Amante Hiller is fired up. And Northwestern wins possession. All the momentum shifting to the two seed. The Big Ten champions with their backs against the wall. Down as much as eight. They've shrunk the lead to three. And they're looking for more. Has a step. Goldstock snuffs it out. Sammy Mueller from point blank rage. And Asa Goldstock says no. Huge stop for Goldstock. Now could Syracuse clear. Doucette's way out of her goal. The senior has to scurry back in there. Syracuse losing their cool for a second, but then recovers. And Doucette is really gambling in the midfield on that 12-person ride. Sipkins. And a goal! Curling around the cage, Megan Tyrell does it again! And the Orange adds some breathing room. It's a four-goal lead for Syracuse. A much-needed score for Syracuse. That Tyrell catch was really impressive. She makes it look so easy. Fifth goal today, 15th of the tournament. She's turned it on strong. Six below, caught up here. Simpkins with the feed, and just to catch that, knowing that a defender's screaming down, she's right on top of the goal circle area. Great placement. Stops this Northwestern run. Excellent finish. To stop the run, you have to answer that momentum, and Megan Tyrell did just that. Seven points, five goals and two assists in this game. That's what you need from a leader on the field. You've got to cut that momentum for Northwestern if you're Syracuse and you want to pull out the win. Syracuse had gone 12 minutes and 42 seconds without a goal. And who do you turn to? Megan Tyrell. Super clutch from the junior. Now the Orange wins the draw. Leading by four. Six minutes away from a championship appearance against Boston College. Emma Tyrell getting chased. Splits the double team confidently. What did you say in semifinal number one? You run out of trouble, right, Sheehan? <laughs> don't pass out of it. Ruth, don't poop. Here's Emma Tyrell. I'm Sierra Cockrell. This is beautiful passing from Syracuse. Pressure situations. Every pass is perfect. And it leads to a goal. Back-to-back -back goals for Syracuse. This one from Emily Ale. And it's a five-goal lead for the Orange with 5.30 to play. The offense went a little quiet for Syracuse, but they've woken up these last couple plays. Beautiful goals they're having Northwestern. They've turned up the heat defensively. They're pressuring all over the field, but Syracuse handling that pressure so well. Emily Ale right there, grad transfer from Georgetown, making her first semifinal appearance. She's calling for the ball. She wants this great extension, excellent height, and beautiful placement, non-stick side. Getting the separation to Syracuse needs. They're sniffing the national championship game, and you can just see the look of disappointment right there on Kelly Monte Hiller, but still plenty of time left. I hope somebody watching at home caught it. Gary Gate actually cracked a smile for, I think, the first time in his 14-year career on the Syracuse sideline. Two goals in 42 seconds. Northwestern had cut it to three. What a response from this young Orange team, and they just keep pushing on. Emma Tyrell wins another draw control. Finds the freshman Jenny Markey. These are underclassmen on a national semifinal stage making big plays for Syracuse. Look at this ball movement here. Goal wide open. Swart with the score. Pick 
picture perfect passing. And Northwestern now trailing by six. Sam Swart, just incredible job. But I love how many different players touch the ball for Syracuse before it goes into Sam Swart. This is how you beat a Northwestern team. There's no goalie in cage. Sometimes it's hard to shoot on an open net. It takes a lot of poise and control, and Sam Swart has just that, finds the back of the net. Bench on the sideline for Syracuse is going crazy. You got a big smile from Gary Gates. He's got to be happy. I mean, the, the Syracuse didn't look like Northwestern. They were going to make the charge. I felt like the momentum had all gone their way. Syracuse stopped that run. It's a game of runs. Excellent display. I mean, this Northwestern offense, we talked about, they are the number one offense in the nation, being limited to 12 goals. Still plenty of time to battle back, though. And that's the beauty of the shot clock. Always in it. Here's Skane. She's been suffocated all game long. It continues with under five minutes to play. Call hold defensively. This will be an eight-meter opportunity. Dylan Amanti, the niece of Kelly Amanti Hiller, and the daughter of Tony Amanti, who played 18 years in the NHL. So great pedigree for the sophomore. She steps up for a free position in a big spot. Fires it past Acer Goldstock. A confident strike from Dylan Amante. That'll make her aunt happy. Head coach Kelly Amante Hiller pulls Northwestern back within five. 4.43 to go. Plenty of time for the Wildcats. Yeah, nice hard rip from the eight meter. One step fire and score. This is great because not only does it score, there's not a lot of time taken off the clock. Gets it right back to the center. Syracuse has the edge and draws in the game, 16 to Northwestern's 13. Great pedigree in this Imani family, daughter of Tony Imani. Great hockey, great. Every draw control gets more and more crucial as time ticks down. Syracuse comes up with it. Ella Simpkins. It's a card. And Go. you hear a card from the official. Wow. That's a big call because it's unreleasable. So Syracuse with 4.36 to go goes two, two minutes woman up. And even though contact wasn't made, the officials have the right to call for those dangerous flashes, swiping checks. Seventh yellow card for Northwestern, Syracuse with three. As you mentioned, this is unreleasable for two minutes. The possession clock still is in effect. There's not a certain area that you need to keep the ball in. You can use the whole entire field if you want to spread it out, go back to your goalie. And this is where it really pays to have a confident goalie in the clearing game like Asa Goldstock. This is so tiring. You work on this defensively, how to get the ball back. And you can see these Northwestern players, they are running, trying to double. I mean, this is a passing clinic for Syracuse in the second half. They are showing off their ball, ball movement they, and ball control. Great crisp passes. You really just want to move the ball, tire out this defense. It is exhausting. You got to be careful. This, have we seen another card? So we've seen this happen. You got to adjust the officials. The swiping check, the dangerous flash. You got it. Thank you, 44. So now two women up for a minute and 17 seconds. Then it'll just be one woman up. Gary Gate, the Hall of Famer on the sideline, chasing that first national championship as a head coach. He's won one's as an assistant coach and certainly many as a player. 
and said he took this job 14 years ago to bring a national championship to Syracuse. Three minutes and 35 seconds away from getting that opportunity against Boston College, a team they beat in the ACC semifinal 19-17. to Whistle start from her. been a very long defensive set for Northwestern trying to get the ball back. Now being down two players, it's exhausting. And you can just see the restraint of Syracuse trying to hold on to the ball. They're not going to be forced into shooting in the cage. Try to work this clock. What a feed and an even better finish. That could be the clincher for Syracuse. The passing, I, I've said it a bunch, Ian, could not be better for Syracuse. It's crisp, it's effective, it's so many players getting involved, and that starts with the whole motion offense. Everyone is a threat. They're moving off ball, they're cutting into space, spreading out, making the defense chase. Look at that long cross-field pass, then goes right back down the crease. Just great difference, changing the points of attack, making the defense rotate. Beautiful score, Jenny Markey. The penalties, once again, are unreleasable for, for Northwestern. Eight yellow cards issued today for Northwestern. The fouls have, have really been a big factor in this game for Northwestern. Timeout. Timeout taken by Kelly Amante Hiller. She knows her team is in trouble. Down by six, two women down, 2.59 to go. How about Jenny Markey, freshman, comes in, six goals on the season, has three on a championship semifinal. Well, that just goes a lot to your coaching staff, too, just giving the belief in everyone that anyone can step up. You've got the confidence. You've got the green light out there. At any time you take a team to a national championship game, you're a good head coach. But what Gary Gate and his staff have done, losing three starters from this team, all to ACL injuries, Harris, Chuck, and Carney, their two best scorers, they have not skipped a beat. One person just stepped up their production. It's been amazing just to refill the confidence. And very, it hasn't taken them long to adjust. We, adjust. we mentioned when Megan Carney went down, that was hard for them to get a little bit in offensive flow, but not for very long. They were able to figure out different players that need to step up. Megan Tyrell has really just established herself as a leader. You see Emma Tyrell right there. Amazing Emma Ward. All phenomenal. And you're watching Syracuse, and they make it look so easy, it maybe doesn't settle in. But think about a football team. You lose your quarterback and your lead running back. That's what Harris, Chuck, and Carney are. And you find a way to get to a national championship game. They're having all sorts of laughs on the sideline, having fun. I mean, the offense, it's team. It is what you want as a team. Different people scoring. Of the 19 goals today, 14 are assisted for Syracuse. And that is, that is huge. On Northwestern side, they've gotten the 13 goals, just five assists. A lot of those feeds inside have not been able, they've not been able to convert on. Caitlin Mischewski, an unsung hero at the draw control circle today, wins another one for SU. It's a game of constant chasing for Northwestern defensively. Still a woman down, doesn't make it any easier. And this passing's unguardable right now for Syracuse. Every pass is right on the money. Great skip pass. I mean, I, we've talked about just how hard it is defensively to run, try to get the ball back. Two minutes remaining. Inches away from a 20th goal. Emma Ward there to back it up. 
fresh 90 on the shot clock, too. Back to even strength. But a miscommunication, and Sam Swart puts the cherry on top for Syracuse. A seven-goal lead against undefeated, the Big Ten champions, Northwestern. And Syracuse is running them out of Johnny United Stadium. And Sheehan and Jay, you talked about it, but it's the ball movement for Syracuse that's been so impressive in this second half. Again, not easy when you're that spread out. It takes a lot of fitness and a lot of poise when you're on the doorstep of the crease to be able to put the ball in the back of the net. And what I love most about that possession for Syracuse was they got the second and third possession to keep the ball in their offensive end. The Orange are feeling it. They have been able to string together some goals. So many different players scoring. This year has been so challenging for all the teams that participated. We finally made it to championship weekend. So much to be proud of to get here. But the underdogs have, have prevailed. Two undefeated programs entered championship weekend. Neither one even gets to advance to the final. D.C. hanging on to and North Carolina, their first loss of the year. And now Syracuse a minute and 20 seconds away from joining Boston College in the final. That'll be a rematch of the ACC semifinal. She and I don't know, that was probably the game of the year that you and I did. 1917, so fun to watch. Syracuse won that game. So if you like scoring, we'll see you Sunday right back here, noon Eastern time on ESPNU. Two teams very familiar with each other, so it's going to be interesting to see the adjustments that they make. It'll be their fourth meeting of the year, twice in the regular season where they split. And then like we mentioned in the ACC semis with Syracuse won. Add another and make it a beauty. The shovel goal, and Syracuse can feel it. An eight-goal thrashing of the Big Ten champs in the national semifinal. The cherry on top. Emily Yale, ninth goal of the season. Who are you? <laughs> Emma Ward, great feed. Emma Tyrell. Just, just changing all just to make the defense completely rotate. Beautiful shovel shot. That's just great stick handling. Dana, what's the mood like on that Syracuse sideline? Gary Gate is throwing out the fist pumps. He went down the line of the Syracuse sideline and was giving everyone fist pumps. He says, we did it, we did it. And one of the players, Sierra Cockrell, said, we're this much closer to a national championship. Now they haven't done it just yet. I mean, they definitely did it today, but Gary Gate's all about winning that national championship. They'll get an opportunity against Boston College Sunday at noon. What's cool, Sheehan, is somebody's going to win their program's first ever national championship. I mean, you love that. It's great for the game, great for the sport. Love seeing that happen. And both these programs have been in the mix for a long time, but still chasing that dream. What a play to end the game. Asa Goldstock throws it 70 yards on the money to Emma Ward. The dream is alive for the Syracuse Orange. A convincing 21 to 13 win against the Big Ted Champs Northwestern. And the Wildcats their first loss of the season. Both undefeated teams lose on semifinal Friday. You know, it has been the Syracuse team has gotten better each game. A complete team effort. 
when you talk to these coaches, they say that you got to have everyone's got to do their part, everyone's got to do their 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 job, and they all did it so well. You see the smiles, the effort. They've earned it. Somebody will win their program's first ever national championship Sunday at noon. Boston College and Syracuse. The Orange moving. Gene Stanford Birch, Dana Boyle, Archer.